is Roger Danboys, and today I'm going to show you how to play the spoons. Uh, I'm going to try to give you a, maybe a little bit of history. This not I couldn't find very much history about the spoons, except for the fact that the spoons are not totally Irish or French. They occur in every culture in the, in the world. For instance, the Russians uh, use spoons in their music. Uh, all of Western Europe have spoons in their music. So the spoons are not traditionally Irish or French, but um, they occur all over the world. The sp spoons help develop different ways of, uh, of um, uh, using different things in 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 the uh, in and around their um, their culture uh, to produce music. For instance, uh, I'm I'm not sure, but some of you might have heard uh, someone playing the bones. Now the bones were taken from uh, a rib of uh, an animal that they had uh, uh, killed, and uh, they used the curved part of the rib bones. They would put it between their fingers, and they would snap the bones together. Uh, that was the kind of music they made with um, a, an instrument like that. Uh, back in uh, many, many years ago, uh, they didn't have metal spoons, they had wooden spoons, so they would tap with wooden spoons. Uh, and we've all seen uh, pictures of people in, uh, in uh, uh, different places who play bongos, who play on logs, who who use sticks to uh, uh, produce a beat. Uh, I guess man has been created by God to produce music in some fashion or other, and uh, anything that they could pick up and produce music with, uh, they did. Uh, how many of you, uh, when you hear a good song, a good tune, tap your foot. Probably every song that you hear, you probably keep a beat with your foot. And so people developed using their feet to produce a beat. Um, they used, uh, maybe the spoons became a, a drumstick. How many of you have eaten uh, at the dinner table and taken your knife or fork and uh, tapped out a little beat on your dinner plate. Um, there seems to be this sort of uh, desire for uh, men and women to just you know, produce music uh, in some fashion. Well anyway, today we're going to learn to use some tablespoons to produce music. Uh, I have to admit that these are not the favorite way of producing music for me. I will show you how to use these tablespoons because they're so readily available. You just go in your silverware drawer and pick up some tablespoons. Teaspoons will work except they're not as comfortable to hold. And then they have those other spoons that are quite bigger. They're probably used to uh, scoop out mashed potatoes. Now, you can use those bigger ones too. They will produce a different sound. But my favorite <clears throat> uh, spoons to use are some that are produced uh, in different places like the wooden spoons. This particular spoon here I picked up in Quebec City. It is made out of, uh, this one I believe is made out of oak and uh, uh, they probably both are out of oak. But a spoon must be made out of wood. It must be made out of a hard uh, hardwood because hardwoods have more spring. A soft wood would not spring back as fast, would not uh, um, to make the sound that you desired. Spoons usually have a, a hollow on each side. That's to make different sounds. So if you just hit a spoon on your knee, it'll make a sound. But if you hit it 
with the hollow, it makes a different sound. So uh, uh, that's why the hollows. Most spoons have this little lip here that you can see. And that's for uh, different techniques on the spoon, like raking. If you didn't have that lip, it would be a little harder to do. If you notice, uh, my favorite spoons are these. And I picked these up at uh, Saint Jean Port Joli. Um, this one is got one advantage is that it is not square here, so I can run my finger through it and make a different sound. It also has those little nipples here for for raking. Um, but these are uh, good spoons. Their cost maybe today might, might be um, 30 to 40 dollars. If some of you uh, wish to purchase uh, some wooden spoons, uh, you can buy them on the web. There's a Canadian company that for $40, I have, they make a great spoon. And that's all they do. And I can't remember the name of it, but I will, uh, I will get it for you. Uh, I know this is a two session part. So the first session will be just the basic use of the spoons. And on the second session, I will try to get you some information about where you can purchase wooden spoons. These are the easiest to play. I have to say, easiest to play. And uh, for no more than $40, you can get something that you can accompany any type of music. I've seen them used with jazz, jazz players, blues players. So anyway, uh, yeah. So I'm going to show you how to take some kitchen spoons and play them. All right. When you choose your kitchen spoons, make sure that your spoon is a spoon that has a wider top here and narrower in the middle. Don't choose one that has a comes to a point at the top here because you will not be able to hold it. The, this this type of spoon gives you a chance to hold it. You know, make sure both spoons have that same thing. Now to hold the spoons, the spoons are to uh, not face each other, not the the uh, the concave to face each other but to be on opposite sides. What you do is you take the first spoon and you put it across your second uh, fold in your, in your finger. So your first, your first digit, part of the digit is here, the second part is here, you put your spoon across there. So that inside your hand you have the ability to hold that spoon there. The next thing you do is you take your second spoon and you put it under that first finger so that you line them up and you hold it with your, your, uh, your second finger and your third finger. Those fingers are used to keep the spoons uh, align together. When you play, the spoons will tend to become offset and they won't play anymore. But if you have a good hold of them here, they will tend to stay together. And while you are playing, you have the ability to, to keep them aligned. Now, if I hold these spoons real tight, it doesn't, it doesn't make very much noise because I'm holding them too tight. I've got to hold them just tight enough so I get a... So 
I get them clacking together and yet bouncing apart. So what you need to do is to align them forward and backwards. I like to have my finger about in the middle of the, the handle. And if I use my fingers to hold this, it will, should be Now I see that this works pretty well. Now, when I play, it will not hold its position that way all the time. I will have to keep coming back and while I'm playing, kind of adjust it by wrapping my hand around it sometimes, bringing them back together because they will tend to spread apart. So I'll bring them back together, or I could even bang them on my, my knee this way to bring them back together and keep the... Remember, it would be nice if you could keep that beat all the time, but sometimes because your spoon spread, up, spread apart like this, I have to bring them back and align them again to make that clicking sound. So here's what we're going to do. I've got some uh, music that uh, I'm going to play and uh, hopefully you have your spoons ready. Uh, before we play the music I'm just going to ask you to play with me just some simple beat. So if you can join me in just keeping this beat. We'll do this about uh, 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, easy enough. Let's double that. So let's go one and two. So one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten. Is it working? Seems to work for me. Now let's add something else. Let's add let's add a click on the way up by just clicking inside our hand. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten. That's not too hard, is it? Seems to work. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to play a, a reel called St. Anne's Reel. St. Anne's Reel is sort of played quite quickly, but I found a St. Anne's Reel that is on the slower side, which will allow us to play along. So. Playing the spoons is just a matter of practice, so we're going to do just the one click the first time through. Okay, so we're going to go and we'll run through the song once, playing it with just the one, one click one on the beat, just as if you were tapping your foot on the floor. The next time through we'll add two, two beats, and then we'll add our and you'll see how pretty soon you'll be adding your own kind of little off beats in, uh, in that uh, song. So let me get it started here. All right, let's get our spoons ready. Make sure that they... All right. And here we go. Follow with me. It'll be just a simple beat like this.
time through, let's double the beat. And I'll tell you when. Okay. simple huh? up and down just keep your hand above now we're gonna add a little bit of uh, flair to our playing a little bit it's just uh, it's called a you know a hand roll or instead of going like this we're just gonna roll our hand and do it same thing you go there you could even do it on your on your elbow if you want but um, so let's try the same tune and we're going to do uh, the last thing that we did up and down but notice that sometimes you don't have to put your hand above it you can just go back to your which adds a little variety it's not as boring for the listeners and for you too. So let's try that same tune and we're gonna add the roll and I'll tell you when to do it. I'll just say roll your, roll your hand. Okay, and uh, do that. And uh, sometimes I'll say just take your hand off, hand off and just keep the beat this way. Hand on, hand off, hand on, roll. So I'll just play around that way a little bit to see if you um, can practice that. So here we go again. Now when you start a song, by the way, this is just uh, something added. You don't have to start playing the spoon at the first note that's played. You can uh, uh, go a measure, like for instance, let's listen to this song and what it does, uh, how it sounds. Okay. Da, 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 you see it has three notes. Ba, da, da, we can start on the third note. Ba, da, da, ba, da, 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 ba, da, da, and that's where we'll start, okay? So, when you hear ba da, we'll start on the third note. Just going up and down. All right, let's give this another try. Oops. Let me rewind this. Okay, roll your hand. Off your hand. 
the back of your hand. that sometimes when you cup your hand over the the um, concave the bowl of the uh, the spoon it makes a different sound than if you just hit on the edge so you can uh, you can uh, do that when you're playing also. And uh, remember when I said hit a little harder. So, so you can have uh, just different sounds by the intensity of the strike or uh, just uh, how you cup your hand over the, the spoon itself. All right, so that's basically some just basic moves with the spoon just going up and down and if you take your hand off it gives it a different beat and just uh, as you play with reels or whatever just uh, change the variety of your uh, uh, your hand uh, your style and uh, it just adds to the music adds to the enjoyment just as a review, I'm just going to show you about the spoons. Go in your silverware cabinet and uh, uh, get two uh, tablespoons. Uh, make sure that the tablespoons are wider at the uh, top of the stem, like these are, rather than narrower. They make it easier to hold the spoon. So your first spoon will go on top of your index finger. I, li I like to go about the middle of the spoon, so I like to put it about in the middle of the spoon this way. And the second spoon will be underneath the index finger so that the bowls of the spoon are facing apart. They're looking away from each other. Now, do not hold the spoon so tight that you're not going to get much sound out of, it, out of them. Use your second finger and your third finger to hold the spoon against your uh, inside of your hand. Okay, 
don't hold it so tight that you will lose sound but just enough so that you keep the spoons together the spoons will tend to stray apart like this while you're playing and I'm sure you have seen me do that while I was playing my spoons were drifting apart and you saw me go like this I cut my hand over it just to bring them together it's only one beat and and as you notice sometimes I don't have to play all the beats see you can use that time to straighten your spoons all right if you find that you're too uh, uh, here's another thing if you find that your two tablespoons are not quite the same size one might have a bigger bowl in it so it doesn't have to be as big always put the smaller one on top and I'll tell you why if you have the smaller one on top when you cup your hand like this it will tend to bring the two in line with each other if the big one is at the bottom then what happens is I mean if the small ones at the bottom what will happen is that small one will not have any um, any help in uh, centering itself but if it's, it's on top it'll automatically just as you tap up it'll automatically center itself on the bottom spoon so when you are playing remember if you want to center the spoons cup your hand like this and when you bring your uh, spoon up you can bring them back together uh, let's see anything else so they must be loose enough so that they they strike and make a sound on the way down and on the way up okay I'm going to if you are thinking of purchasing one of these I'll get you uh, the email address as a matter of fact I'm going to these addresses for ordering spoons like this will be on the video okay there is a great place in Canada that makes them they're real good at making them and I think they're about forty dollars and they have some all kinds of colors uh, and uh, are, they're great spoons they, they look a lot like this and these are great so I'll, I'll play both of these for you just to show you how it uh, sounds uh, so make it just a little bit faster you'll get uh, uh, a better idea of uh, how this works uh, when you buy these some have different shapes some have um, they have a usually a place where you can hold them there's because you know you, you can do all kinds of tricks with these so therefore you need to have a good grip on the spoon itself and this one happens to have a sort of a, a nice little handle for you to hold the other one has uh, this different way to hold it uh, and uh, some some people will put their finger in here uh, to to uh, play them this one you can't put your finger in there because you're probably going to restrict it but it, no it sounds okay too you notice that these are 
square across here. I can't run my finger through it. These are made so that you can run your finger through it and get that kind of sound when you do that. Well, I'm going to play a faster tune. It's uh, uh, an Irish, uh, little Irish jig, and uh, you'll see what we can do with the, these spoons. So here we go. <laughs> It's kind of fun, isn't it? Once you get into it, it's kind of like, wow, it sounds pretty nice. So the, the next session, I'm going to teach you how to do the roll. I'm doing different techniques that you can use with playing the spoons. And uh, uh, if you practice, uh, you can play with anything, any song. Yep. So I hope you enjoyed this session. The next session will be a, just a little bit more difficult. And that's it. We'll see you for the next section, session. <laughs>